you very much, John Padiris, ladies and gentlemen. Jerry Defoe, Executive Director of the Canadian Public Health Association, opening the first international conference on health promotion, which was held in Ottawa, Canada, between the 17th and 21st of November, 1986. The conference was organized jointly by the World Health Organization, Health and Welfare Canada, and the Canadian Public Health Association, and brought together more than 200 participants from 38 countries. The speakers included Canadian National Health and Welfare Minister, the Honourable Jay Kep, and the Director General of the Health Promotion Directorate of Health and Welfare Canada, Ron Draper. From WHO came European Regional Director, Dr. Joe Azeval, European Regional Officer for Health Promotion, Dr. Ilona Kickbush, and WHO Director General, Dr. Halfdan Mahler, who outlined the historical and contemporary significance of the gathering. I think going right back to the Almata Conference on Primary Healthcare, where for the first time you got really a kind of a rediscovery of what I would call an old forgotten melody, that health is not manipulating people as objects, but also making them subjects of their own kind of health development of making people able to take their own kind of responsibility in creating pressures on politicians and creating pressures on themselves. So this came up in the debate, uh, community participation, all kinds of fanciful words of, of, of different kinds, practiced differently in different uh, countries. But I believe it took us a number of years after the Almata where most people were sneering cynics, saying, you know, if people are people are people, you know, don't come and tell me this crap that you can somehow you can enable people to take their own health destiny into their own hands. And a lot of us uh, who are more traditional uh, medical quacks as I am, uh, also have become so accustomed to uh, manipulating people make them addicted to your own kind of superior knowledge. At the very most, you are paternalistic in your condescending sympathy, rather than you are trying to mobilize that much more expensive empathy and trying to look things through their eyes, whether it's your sick patient or the healthy person or the family, whatever it may be. So quite a number of years after Almava went by somehow where, well, you know, we keep the old reflexes after all, kept on manifesting themselves. And then more and more people here and there in, came forward with lots of the experience of groups in the 60s who somehow had taken upon themselves self-helping and trying to ask themselves question, well, if we can't get it from these rotten kind of our medical repair services we are, have here, let's better have our own kind of creativity and see whether we can help each other. So I believe that gradually we have had some kind of very strong internal conflictual debates in WHO, and I think they have reflected what went on at national levels, that when people were saying health promotion, most people would say this is some very, very hot, hot air but absolutely nothing but one monumental illusion, just another kind of rebaptizing of the classical health education. So for me, the real significance is that slowly but consistently, we have been trying to build up a body of conviction that it is not bluff when we are speaking about a new era in health, a new era in public health, or whatever you prefer and that health promotion just conceivably might become the important lever for making a radical change in the way everybody is looking at health as you move towards the end of the century. So I see this as a milestone where we try to take stock, try to call the bluff, indeed I hope that will also take place in this conference, but also try to come out at the other end with a very, very solid kind of feeling there's a good deal of concrete things we can do now and then we can develop over the coming years and which 
with reasonable kind of confidence can be given the name health promotion as distinct from the conventional disease prevention and certainly as distinct from the conventional cure and rehabilitation. Over the days of the conference, participants from 50 countries shared their experience, talked, debated, exercised, learned about a wide variety of community-based initiatives and hammered out a charter which clarified key concepts, highlighted the conditions and resources required for health and identified key actions and strategies needed to pursue health for all. The Ottawa Charter called for building healthy public policy, creating supportive environments, strengthening community action, developing personal skills and reorienting health services. This, ladies and gentlemen, was the Ottawa Charter. Over the past 25 years, the Charter has had a profound effect on public health and the world. Described as a tipping point for global health development, the meeting in Ottawa set in motion a process that has catalyzed the engagement and development of new settings for health in cities, schools, prisons, hospitals, villages, islands and regions, and new health promotion organizations and publications around the world. It has stimulated research and advocacy action that has enhanced public health's evidence base, reach and political influence. Since Ottawa, WHO and national governments have organized a series of conferences that have addressed and adapted each of Ottawa's five action areas to changing global, regional and national contexts, challenges and opportunities. Adelaide, Australia, 1988, called for the engagement of all sectors in the development of public health policies. Sundsvall, Sweden, 1991, looked at ways to address changing social, political and economic environments and called for sustainable development approaches which informed the Rio Conference and Agenda 21 soon after. Jakarta, Indonesia, 1997, the first of four conferences in the developing world looked at new players, addressed issues relating to globalization and partnership. In Mexico City, Mexico, 2000, health equity was the focus. In Bangkok, Thailand, 2005, the social determinants of health. And in Nairobi, Kenya, 2009, health and development issues took center stage. Plans for the 8th conference in Helsinki 2013 call for a focus on practical ways to develop and implement effective health in all policies approaches. Since Ottawa, there have been major and diverse shifts in thinking, policy and action for better health in Europe and beyond at all levels. But a clear thread can be detected which leads us back to this meeting of free thinkers from 50 countries which developed and affirmed a series of principles and action which have framed the value systems and practice of health promotion. As we now facilitate a process with partners to craft a new common European health policy, Health 2020, we draw on this legacy and the collective experience and wisdom of our extended public health community and once again set out to reframe the way people look at health and well-being to agree on evidence-informed actions that foster whole-of-government and whole-of-society approaches to health. To ensure that all people
people are enabled and supported in achieving their full health potential and well-being and that all countries individually and collectively reduce inequalities in health within the region and beyond. So let us celebrate our history and move forward with pride, confidence and courage to making healthier choices easier and creating a healthier Europe and a healthier globe. This is our time. <laughs>